Greetings class, this is chapter eight and we'll be discussing sustaining biodiversity, the species approach. So section one is asking the, what role the humans play in extension of species. Uh, so the first thing that uh, we should talk about is biological extension. Uh, extinction is when a species is no longer found on the earth. It can weaken or break connections within the ecosystem. Uh, so in our three principles of sustainability, uh, we talk primarily about biodiversity, chemical cycling, and solar energy. Um, and through our discussion of the different types of biodiversity, we know very well that an elimination of the species and wreak havoc on uh, the function functions that are played out in ecosystems, such as chemical cycling and such as the capture of solar energy. Um, we want to separate this concept of uh, mass extinction, uh, which is when multiple species uh, die off in a relatively short period um, and this has happened about five times uh, in what scientists designate as Earth's history uh, and in each of these cases 50 to 95 percent of the world's species died off and each time it was a recovery period of uh, several million years. Now, when we talk about this extension rate that's been being influenced by humans as of late, um, this is a rate that's 100 to 1,000 times uh, background rate of extension, which is the natural rate of extension. Uh, the push of urbanization, industrialization, uh, and the pollution and uh, diversion of uh, natural cycling of systems uh, has greatly increased the natural rate of extinction. Uh, not only is extinction the problem, it's the destruction of ecosystems uh, that are conducive to the rise of new species. So our replacement rate is uh, itself being harmed. Um, we use endangered threatened species as indicators. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the Endangered Species Act later, but this list of endangered and threatened species uh, that is monitored uh, in the US and uh, internationally, uh, it gives us a good idea of um, how our actions are impacting uh, biodiversity of the planet. Um, and looking at uh, some of the characteristics that can put species in danger, um, we see uh, low reproductive rates. Uh, uh, something that a uh, uh, species that cannot uh, replace quick enough, then it's being taken off. Uh, a very specialized niche. Uh, this happens when uh, the role that an organism plays uh, is so isolated um, and so unique. Uh, that once that is disrupted, uh, their existence is threatened. Um, narrow distribution, uh, it's the species is found only in uh, small spatial areas. Um, it feeds at a high trophic level. Uh, fixed migratory patterns, the rarity or uniqueness, uh, the commercial uh, value of the organism, uh, for instance, uh, tusks, uh, elephants, rhinoceros, uh, leopard skins, tiger skins, um, and then large territories, right? Percentage of various species threatened with extinction rate through human activities. Um, people may not know this. 
But as far as animal species are concerned, it's fish, right? And that speaks a lot about our stewardship of waterways. Um, I had an opportunity to work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 2012. Um, 95% of the species on the list were fish, right? Uh, and a lot of those were freshwater, freshwater uh, mussels, um, uh, fish, and other species of, of water-dwelling animals, right? It speaks a lot of how we value our water resources. So the question then is why should we care, right? Well, we spoke before about uh, natural capital. Natural capital equals natural resources plus natural services. Um, this allows you to realize the, the role in energy dynamics and chemical cycling of all, all species. Um, for instance, uh, The natural uh, capital uh, soil resources would be the uh, soil itself and the services that it provides. So as an organic matter sink, as a uh, uh, wild water filtration system, as a planting medium, right? Uh, how are species important to the, that role that it plays? microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi, uh, insects and worms, right? That do a lot of the mixing and breaking down of certain uh, uh, carbon resources, right? The extinction at that level uh, to certain species could be catastrophic to the entire biosphere, right? Because of the importance that soil plays Right. This is why we care about uh, the extinction of uh, individual species. Um, also, it's the economic services that they provide. Uh, plants are used as food, fuel, fiber, and mediums, uh, and, uh, mediums for medicine. Right, has an incredible economic impact on the on the global economic system. Um, another issue that we'll talk about later is uh, ethics, right? This idea of stewardship, um, which is, isn't held by every culture, not every human being. Uh, we'll speak a little bit more as to how ethics uh, can shift uh, depending upon necessity. Um, uh, but ethics also plays a large role in uh, why we care about the preservation of species. Okay, how do humans accelerate species extinction? Hipco, 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 hipco. Um, as you can imagine, this is gonna be a major part of uh, the exam uh, coming from this chapter, right? So hipco stands for one, habitat destruction, degradation, and fragmentation. Two, invasive and non-native species. Three, population growth, increase in use of resources. Four, pollution. Five, climate change. And six, over-exploitation. Loss of habitat is the single greatest threat to species. So, I mean, when we conceptualize this, uh, we can look at the destruction of, of any habitat uh, and, and what it actually does to the species. Um, deforestation, um, not just in tropical areas, but in any poor forested areas uh, is catastrophic. Uh, the amount of habitat space uh, in actual ecological niches that are available in a forested system uh, is vastly greater than any other ecosystem type. Um, you lose 
uh, uh, scales of 10 of uh, 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 niches, ecological niches, when uh, areas clear cut or deforested. Um, destruction and degradation of coral reefs, right? Uh, we spoke about coral reefs when we spoke about water resources uh, in Environmental Science 1. Uh, these are the forests of the shallow sea, okay? Uh, they have an incredible amount of, of niches as well. Um, then you also have grazers and uh, predators that actually rely on these as well uh, uh, to continue their existence. Um, so it's also not just the complete wiping out of these um, these ecosystems. It could be the fragmentation as well. So if you're putting in a highway and you uh, go right through a forested ecosystem, you then fragment it. Uh, you're naturally, well, not naturally, but you're cutting off uh, one part of that ecosystem from another. Uh, and in some instances, you can get what's called the island effect. Uh, when you isolate a uh, species from some of the other uh, species in the community that it used to interact with, uh, then that species will evolve in time uh, to be somewhat of a unique species that is only capable of uh, uh, existing in that island ecosystem. Right? This is not a good thing, uh, but it happens quite often uh, with human fragmentation of ecosystems. Right here, we have a demonstration of how uh, reductions of uh, species of, of some of the great uh, mammals uh, of Africa and Asia uh, have occurred. Okay, we just spoke about this fragmentation in islands, island species. Uh, the next uh, topic is invasives. Um, invasives are dangerous uh, uh, in a, quite a few ways, um, but uh, in particular, they can be dangerous because they can be well suited to exploit uh, the resources in a specific area. Uh, well, why is that important? Well, that's important because if they're well suited to exploit the resources, they easily outcompete the other species. Um, their niche may then overlap the niches of some of the, the native species as well, uh, species that aren't even concerned about the, the same resources, uh, but may have the same habitat, uh, for instance. Uh, this can be extremely problematic. Here's a list of some of the deliberate, non-deliberate, uh, uh, non-natives that have been introduced. Uh, I'll go as far as to say that uh, specifically in the area that Tuskegee University is in, uh, we have a serious issue with this organism right here, European wild boar, the feral hog. Uh, and now it's costing landowners uh, dearly uh, in our region. Uh, another one, of, another one of those examples would be the kudzu vine um, that was introduced to the U.S. from Japan. Uh, you can actually ride up and down the highways, uh, and the back roads, and you find kudzu in the southeastern U.S. Um, and has overtaken many ecosystems and outcompete plants for sunlight, right? but it also has seemed to create habitat for other organisms. So how then do we control this? Uh, don't capture or buy wild plants and animals. Don't remove wild plants from their natural areas. Do not release wild plants back into nature. Do not dump contents from aquariums, waterways, wetlands, or storm drains. Uh, this was a particular issue. Uh, these two, uh, we're talking about the Everglades uh, which have now been uh, taken over uh, by pet pythons. Uh, they 
well suited for that environment um, and can now be found regularly throughout uh, South Florida's Everglades, though, though they are non-native. Uh, Um, population growth, overconsumption, pollution, and climate change can cause species extinction as, as well. Um, we can just think about uh, these uh, kind of uh, fitting hand in hand. Uh, population growth uh, increases urban sprawl um, as well as pollution. Uh, that's a threat to many organisms. Um, and then we can think about climate change as well as a, as a result of uh, human action uh, that then uh, causes uh, shifts in weather patterns and climate uh, that can also speed up the process of natural extinction. Um, pollution, right, we talked about pesticides, but also industrial chemicals as well. And then the last one is the uh, overexploitation, um, and that's illegal killing, capturing, and selling of wild species. Right? This is a multi-billion-dollar industry around the world. Um, this is actually only in animals being smuggled. But if we begin to think about uh, harvesting of uh, different animal parts. Um, uh, the, the price jumps, I mean, the price tag on the industry jumps extremely high. Okay, the ESA, Endangered Species Act 73, uh, was designed to protect endangered species in the U.S. Um, under ESA, NMFS is responsible for identifying and listing endangered species, while the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is to identify and list all other endangered and threatened species. Um, any decision to add and remove species must be based on biological factors. Um, ESA has uh, jurisdiction over all federal agencies except for Department of Defense um, to carry out fund or authorize projects that would jeopardize endangered species or destroy and modify its critical habitat. So uh, before uh, these different agencies can build or allow someone to build, they've got to submit uh, a summary to uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. U.S. Fish and Wildlife will check with their maps and their uh, threatened and endangered species in the area. Uh, and if it jeopardizes that species, uh, the contractor must then come up with a mitigation plan on how they will protect that species. And if they don't, then they cannot continue the project in that area. All right, other strategies has to uh, increase wildlife refugees and other protected areas, zoos um, and aquariums, as well as uh, gene banks and seed banks, right, to, uh, to uh, protect and promote is biological diversity. Um, the last point that we're going to make is the precautionary principle. Uh, scientists call for us to take precaution, uh, precautionary action to help prevent premature extinction. This is the precautionary principle. Uh, the principle advocates that when substantial evidence indicates that an activity can be harmful to human, human health and environment, we should take precautionary measures to prevent uh, such harm. Uh, so, using limited financial and human resources to protect biodiversity, based upon this principle, involves three questions. How do we allocate limited resources between protecting species and protecting their habitats? How do we decide which species should get the most attention? And how do we determine which area of land and water are the most critical to protect? Um, these are questions that I can tell you that U.S. Fish and Wildlife deal with on a daily basis, uh, but it's something that governments, municipalities, landowners uh, should be engaged in it as well, as we're all stewards uh, beyond just being consumers of the ecosystem. 
restores to the ecosystem. All right, that is it. Um, and I want to thank you for your attention.